Many of you ask for it, every year. Now at the end of the Dakar Rally, we should do it. Let's compare the Dakar T1 Plus vehicles with Baja 1000 trophy trucks. The Dakar Rally and the Baja 1000 are the two biggest off-road endurance events in the world. But both are pretty different. The Baja 1000 has its name because of the around 1000 miles which need to be covered. The route is different every year and can be a loop or a point-to-point -point race. Teams start on Friday morning and hope to arrive until Saturday evening with a maximum allowed time of 36 hours. On the way, they are allowed to have pit stops with tire changes and refueling. Teams try to get away with 4 pit stops, so roughly every 170 miles. More on fuel consumption later. The Dakar, on the other hand, is easily covering between 500 and 800 kilometers every day for 2 weeks or 12 stages with one rest day in the middle. The fuel tank has to last for the entire stage and also pit stops are not happening during the stage, so the crew has to help themselves. The Dakar happens in changing environments in Saudi Arabia, from sharp rocks to sandy dunes, while the Baja takes place on the Mexican California Peninsula, so a sandy, bumpy environment with bushes. Now let's take a closer look at the cars. The top category in the Dakar is the T1 Plus class. These vehicles have 37 inch wheels, all wheel drive, usually the engine in front but behind the front axle and the main cooling at the back. Since Dakar vehicles need to cover long distances every day without refueling, efficiency is very important. Due to bad accidents in the past, the top speed has been limited to 170 km per hour but still aerodynamics is important. And so, T1 Plus cars have a closed cockpit with a windscreen and doors. They use 6-cylinder turbo or naturally aspirated V8 engines, which are limited to around 380 horsepower. T1 Plus cars have a fuel cell which is enclosed in the safety structure, so it doesn't get damaged in an accident. Because of its position close to the center of gravity, the car's balance doesn't change much during a stage. And also, the two spare wheels are located close to the center of the car. This can be either at the sides or in the sandwich floor underneath the cockpit. It helps to keep the inertia around the vertical axis low and keep the car agile, which is important for quick directional changes. The fuel cell for petrol cars is usually around 500 liters. Because it has to last for up to 800 kilometers, we get a rough fuel consumption of 60 liters on 100 kilometers. The suspension travel is limited to 350 mm and with that cars have independent front and rear suspension, as you can control each wheel individually without interfering with the wheels on the other side and it allows to control the camber of the wheels under bump and rebound. With only 350 mm of travel, drive shafts can still overcome this with their maximum angle of up to 50 degree, but the higher the angle, the higher the stress for the joints and the more likely is a drive shaft failure. The regulations of the Baja 1000 Unlimited class are much more open. As the name suggests, engine displacement and suspension travel is unlimited. Forced induction for the engine is allowed, also a custom tube frame is allowed. And so we see different interesting designs. Most trucks have the V8 engine in front, some have the engine behind the cockpit. Because of pit stops, efficiency is not as important and trucks are not very aerodynamic. They don't have doors and no windscreen, which allows air to flow through the cockpit and hit the main radiator behind it. Safety hazard here is that a failing radiator would spill hot coolant on the passengers. So aerodynamically, Baja trucks don't need air intakes on the roof or at the sides like Dakar cars, but they get cockpit losses and separations from the tube frame on the radiator net. Speeds of up to 220 km per hour can be reached and vehicles often have more than a thousand horsepower. As we said before, they try to get away with four pit stops, which means that their 100 gallon fuel tank lasts for around 270 km which means a fuel consumption of 140 liters on 100 kilometers, which is more than double that of a Dakar vehicle. By the way, the refueling during the pit stops happens somewhere in the landscape with a pressurized system, which can press almost 400 liters of fuel into the truck within 25 seconds. That is enough time for a driver change, even without doors. 
A Baja truck's concept is fine-tuned for its environment. The trucks are built to hover over long bumps as quickly as possible. For this, they need lots of suspension travel. And they typically have 610mm at the front and 740mm at the rear, so more than double that of a T1 Plus car, while using 40-inch wheels. With that extreme wheel travel, an independent suspension at the rear would not be possible for the width of the car. So these trucks use a live axle on trailing arms. It's a super simple system with less components and advantages are that the position of the rear wheels to each other stays the same and the long trailing arms glide over bumps instead of hitting the wishbone mountings from the side all the time, like on an independent suspension. Also, because of the length, the angle of the drive shaft stays in a manageable range. As everyone knows who drove a car with a life axle quickly before, the rear axle needs lateral support, and so these trucks have additional links to keep it in the middle. They use straps to limit maximum travel and additional bump stops. Because of this design, the tube frame looks very different from a Dakar vehicle. The long trailing arms are connected underneath the cockpit and the huge dampers connect to the roll hoop. The rear of the car is a separate, not connected piece above the rear axle and carries lots of weight. To be able to hover over long bumps, teams concentrate lots of weight above the rear axle. So the heavy spare wheels are at the very back. And also the fuel cell is exposed at the very rear, which is another safety hazard in case of an accident, and changes the balance depending on the fuel level. It also increases inertia, and because inertia is important for keeping the car level while hovering over bumps, the Baja trucks are very heavy and can be up to 1000 kg heavier than a Dakar T1 Plus car. So there are huge differences between a T1 Plus vehicle in the Dakar Rally and a Baja 1000 trophy truck. Both vehicles are heavily optimized for their purpose. A Dakar vehicle needs to cover very different terrain over a long time without any assistance, while being limited in speed and suspension travel, while the trophy truck is pretty much unlimited, driving in a certain environment and can have pit stops in between. And of course prices. You can get a used T1 Plus vehicle for around 500,000 euro and a used trophy truck for around 300,000 euro. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and if you want to know more about engine design or Formula 1 bodywork design, check out my top rated online courses on Udemy with the links below. For more off-road tech, check out my Dakar playlist. See you at the next video.